She's got a website, Tara Springett. Uh, that's S S P R I N G E T T. Tara Springett, and uh, she is uh, a psychotherapist. I think she's German, and uh, she had a Kundalini awakening and had various problems during her experience. And now she counsels other people who are going through Kundalini experiences. And this book is a really, really good book. It describes ways of successfully augmenting Kundalini and also ways of curtailing Kundalini syndrome. It's a really good book. It's got a lot of really good practices in it. And I've read it a few times, uh, and it's what interested me about it is it was doing, it talks about practices which I was already doing more or less because I'd read through a bunch of the original tantras, and there's a whole bunch of stuff in tantra about working with deities. Now, in tantric Buddhism, those deities are seen as sort of projections of the interior. So if you're working with a deity, that's actually part of who you are. So it's not like you're worshipping some other god. It's actually it's actually venerating part of yourself, which you haven't known before. So she's got a lot of stuff about this. And there's also a lot of work in the book about working with uh, sensual ideas, uh, which you see mirrored in a lot of other literature. So, for example, one of the ideas is imagining a rose and imagining a rose entering and coming out of your chakras, which obviously if you've got something going in and out, but it's a rose. So, hey, it's symbolic, right? There's no problems there. And it also represents love. Another author, uh, what's his name? Mumford. He's got a similar practice where he puts the rose in and he twists it six times in the chakra and pulls it out. These are all sort of symbolic gestures to open and awaken chakras. It's really interesting. But one of the most interesting things about this book, which... Uh, which interested me this week. She was discussing how to move back and forth between a sort of sensual feeling and a loving feeling. A sensual feeling and a loving feeling. And this was really interesting to me because one of the things that I've been working on, as you have seen maybe in some of my videos, is for the last year I've been working very strongly on working on the sensual aspect of energy and really, really using it in a big way. And yet, at the same time, I did a video a few months back there called Ride the Lightning. And in that video, I was talking about sort of balancing that sensual energy with a sort of uh, an other practice, which is sort of a void meditation and going back and forth between those two ideas. So in this book, it gave me this new idea, which is a really, I've had stunning, stunning effects from this. And I really, really recommend it. And in, in place of going from the sensuality to void, what it is, is going from sensuality to love. And Ram Das spoke about, not about this particular practice, but in several of his videos, you know, he's quite mystical these days, finally. So he's, uh, he's quite mystical. And he's got, a, he's got a video where he talks about loving awareness. Everything's loving awareness, loving awareness. And it's really, it's really nice that he, you can, he can connect to that vibe. But loving awareness is a real distinctly different vibe than the sensual vibe. And so that really interested me. Like, how, how do those connect? How do we connect those two ideas? Now, in one of my classes, in the last class I had love to mention, I uh, suggested that when you work with kundalini or the sensual energy, it actually turns into bhakti. The bhakti is the other form of yoga, which is love-based and how do you actually go around doing that? So I had some insights on how to do it. And you see, one of the things I do is I work with computer graphics quite a lot. And I do, from time to time, I have to write some mathematical expressions and this kind of thing. And one of the things you may know or may not know is from your high school trigonometry class is there's an idea of a sine wave. Maybe you've seen that. It's like a, a curvy wave, the sine wave. And the sine wave represents one of the sort of the primordial fundamental rhythms of the universe and what it represents it represents the movement around the circle if you've got a uh, if you've got a point moving around the circle that actually if you graph it out of the chart it forms a sine wave it's like the perfect form and so what i was thinking of is when i was thinking of moving between love and sensuality i was thinking well what i could do is i could put love at the bottom of the sine wave and sensuality at the top of the sine wave. And what you do is you use rhythm to move up and down, 
and move up and down. So what you do is you move up into sensuality. And when you move into sensuality, you go full on. You have no holes barred, if you will. You allow your mind to think of all all and any thoughts which create energy inside of you. Now, for a lot of people, that can cross all kinds of moral boundaries, moral and ethical boundaries, because oftentimes you may have ideas in your head which you wouldn't actually do in the real world. But in my opinion, this is just my opinion, it's important to confront those ideas and also to forgive yourself or whatever you need to do or accept. It's not just forgiveness, it's also accepting sometimes like uh, whatever desires you may have. But the interesting thing is, is what you do is you, you push this energy up the sine wave, which is imaginary, you push it up and you can do this with breath. You can imagine because your, your breath kind of works on the sine wave. You know, you're going, if you were to map out your breath, it might closely resemble a sine wave. However, I tend to do it on a larger scale than that. I tend to push it, push it, push it, push it, push it, maybe for a couple of minutes, and then I bring it down. And then, so what I do is, as I push it up, I'm moving into spaces which are, get kind of crazy. You know, there's so much energy, and the energy is really building. But what you do is, you start, and you're not really bringing the energy down. What you're doing is you're changing the focus of attention, and you start focusing on acceptance and pure love. And I started off doing this using Ram Das's phrase of loving awareness, loving awareness. But I ended up changing it into loving kindness, loving kindness. And so what I do is as I reach the sort of apex of that energetic vibration, I move into loving kindness, loving acceptance, loving awareness. And all you do really is you, you observe and what you, what you do is you become present and aware of what that energy is. Now, what the interesting thing about this is, and this is for me, this is really interesting, is that all those ideas you might have, all those things which create energy, which oftentimes are very physical-based things, right? Oftentimes what happens is as you move into loving awareness or loving kindness, as you move into loving kindness, all of a sudden, those ideas become revealed as disguises. Those thoughts which your mental body was creating to create energy are actually revealed as disguises. They're like uh, clothes that you wrap up energy in in order to hide its true nature. And this is really interesting because oftentimes what happens is you often hear... Uh, almost every religious tradition talks about lust being one of the primary evils, right? Why is that? Because everybody likes it. But what happens is as you move up using lustful ideas, you move it up, but then what you do is you illuminate it with loving kindness. And what happens is you suddenly notice that the ideas, the mental constructs you were using to create energy suddenly are revealed as uh, false and what they seem to be is they seem to be like prisms. And it, it, it's, it's, the way I've been thinking about it is like like fantasy ideas are like prism. They're like prisms. And what do prisms do? Prisms bend light. So what it is, is in life, this is my theory, is that in life, oftentimes uh, in our lives, you may have had love withheld from you or various things in your life have have made it impossible for you to accept the purity of love. And so what you've done is you've created a construct or a construct's been created for you or however it happens, which is like a prism of light and it traps light inside of it and it gains power based on, it's an artificial construct. So whatever uh, lustful idea you have is actually an artificial trap for light energy. And so what happens is you become incredibly focused on this light energy inside this construct, but it's actually just a disguise for what the light really is. So when you move the loving kindness into this into this area, uh, it becomes, what happens, it's almost like the light inside uh, starts merging with loving kindness and the shell of what those, of what that mental construct was is left behind and you can see it is completely meaningless. So this is obviously a really powerful meditational concept, moving 
up and down in a sine wave. Now the cool thing about sine waves is you can alter the amplitude, you can make it stronger energy, or you can alter the ampli was it the amplitude or the frequency. So you can have you can move in and out quite quickly based on your breath, or you can do it over several minutes, move into the energy for several minutes, and then moving to love and kindness for several minutes. It's a really powerful meditation. Now, another angle of this is is uh, being able to penetrate deeper into these mental constructs. There's an interesting uh, discussion which has taken place. I think it was Swami Sivananda that was saying this, and what they were saying is like, well, if you see a beautiful woman. Because they were trying to they were trying to deal with uh, lust constructs, uh, so what they were trying to do is they were saying like if you see a woman try and think of you know the oh the dirt she's dirty there you know there's urine there's 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 crap right there's excrement and they actually said that in one of their books is to try and think of the negative aspects and this is in a way what they were trying to do is they're trying to sort of bring they were trying to balance out the energy by thinking of negative thoughts to balance out the energy so in a way they were trying to do some kind of like sine wave themselves but i don't think it's necessary i think it's counterproductive to do that so i think i don't think it's a good practice to 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 think negatively like that and i think it focuses i think it gives power to the negative idea because actually, light is beautiful. It is not negative. And so what I think is a more valuable practice, if, like, for example, you're like me and you're thinking of a beautiful woman to move into the desire aspect, into the sensual aspect, what happens is it's often more helpful. In, instead of thinking of some sort of negative aspect, what you do is you expand the aspect into other aspects. So, for example, a more interesting aspect to think of is to think of uh, other aspects of the woman or the man if you're a woman right so for example men often get caught up in the physical appearance right but one of the things that i was doing is instead of uh, as i moved into loving kindness what would happen is my consciousness it would like tendrils of consciousness would go through and what i would start thinking i would start moving my consciousness around I'm sort of getting ahead of myself. This is this is heading into sort of deity identification here. But what you do is in Tantra you imagine like a beautiful woman, but it's actually a goddess. It's a goddess. So today I was doing this with the goddess Lakshmi. Lakshmi is pretty well known and she's pretty renowned. A lot of people venerate her, hoping to gain riches and this kind of thing. But she's a very, very beautiful goddess. But what you do is in this case is you move the consciousness, but you you very beautiful very beautiful very attractive it forces energy through but then what you do is you move the energy into deeper parts of who the goddess might be so you might you might start off thinking about this like it's not a goddess you might think about it like it's just somebody you think is hot right but then what you do is you transform it slowly as you move the energy you transform it slowly with a loving kindness and it becomes a goddess and what you do is you move the energy, you move tendrils of consciousness inside the body. And so what I found today is I was actually inside the womb and the ovaries of the goddess. Now this is a much more interesting place to go because that also removes the focus from the uh, exterior veneer of beauty which often creates lust constructs. And what it does is it, it drives you into a place which is where creation takes place. And so as I was doing this today, I was moving in with loving kindness. And then I found myself within the womb of Lakshmi. And it turned out that the womb of Lakshmi was the universe. And it was this amazing transcendental experience, uh, which was created from acceptance of desire energy changing the focus into loving acceptance and loving kindness and loving awareness and then also instead of trying to denigrate beauty actually trying to extend further into the beauty and to try and find what the true beauty is and i think i mean nobody's going to say anything bad about swami Sivananda, the purest man of the last hundred years probably but but i i think it's a better idea doing this because you're still breaking through the outer veneer uh, but you're focusing on positive aspects. Of course, the interesting thing about this is that there's nothing negative either about the other aspects either. And so in a way, like the idea that thinking about excrement and urine and all these sort of 
uh, aspects of the human body, which some people consider dirty, there's really nothing dirty about those either. So that's not really, it's not really relevant. And as you sort of get into this whole vibe, everything just becomes beautiful as it is. And you know, if you've ever been to like, a, a, if you've ever given birth, if you've ever been in the birthing room, things get really dirty in the birthing room, right? Uh, all, you know, women open up, all fluids come out, all of them. And uh, there's nothing, you know, from a standard perspective, some people might think, oh, that's dirty. But you know, it's part of this process of, of creation. So this is the idea. So I call this uh, like the continuum, I guess, and moving the energy through this sine wave. And the interesting thing about this is there's lots of different ways of using sine waves and using two different energies and alternating between them, like an alternating current. And this is one of the things that Springett said in her book on Kundalini. She was saying that actually enlightenment is not a state of mind. It's a vibration between two different energies. So that's kind of where I get the idea for this is from Tara Springett. So much props to her. Great book, Enlightenment Through the Path of Kundalini. I recommend getting the book. It's a cheap book. It's like eight bucks through a website. And uh, you'll learn a lot from this book. It's an easy read. And it's got some great practices which augment and really extend energy practice into a whole new area.